Okay, so far with our digital painting, we just have two main layers, right? We have a basic, basic shape kind of sketch layer that I didn't use kind of a, a pencil line work for, though I have in the past. Instead, I just started with a big 100% opaque kind of soft edged brush and scrubbed in the basic shapes, the basic form. And then on top of that, I am now building with a smaller brush at a lower opacity, the refined paint layer. And you can see that it makes a big difference as we start to kind of build around edges and define what what the uh, the borders are between local colors, like around the eyes, around the teeth, around the nostrils, and then getting into some of these textural and form shadows that are happening. If you feel like you're a little too constrained, I'm noticing as it's feeling kind of tight at the top. So I might give myself a little bit more space at the top, just go to my canvas size. At any time you can change this. Remember, we are making all of these pixels from scratch. So we have full control of how we approach this. So I'm just gonna put a, an extra 100 pixels or so at the top, just to give it a little bit of space. And then I go, can go to my gray fill layer, unlock it, and fill it again with middle gray. Even though that's not the most exciting background for it, it helps me to see where I'm going darker than middle gray and where I'm going lighter. You can see my palette. If I'm not on gray, you see I lose a lot of those colors from my palette and they just look pretty different. So I like painting with a toned background. I'm gonna lock that again. And then I, I uh, loaded this from my saved file, you know, this one. And so now I can see if my saved brush is still there. So I go to my brush and then I'm gonna find it near the bottom of the presets. And oh no, it is not. It is not still there. See the one on the bottom, yeah, is something very different. But I saved it just in case and it's not hard to remake. Under here, you can say export as an ABR. So I did that right here. And I should probably label this. So this is my Carl Fall 2020 brush. And so now I'm gonna show you how you can load an ABR brush. It's pretty straightforward, pretty intuitive. This is the same as for Photoshop. All right, so now when I scroll down to the bottom, there it is. But all the ABR file can do is save like the brush shape that you designed. So it's always a good idea to check your individual brush settings. I'm gonna use option and choose a darker color so I can see it here. I'm on the refined paint layer. So you see how it's always going the same angle? It's got a little bit of jitter in there, but not as much as I would like. So I'm gonna to go to the brush settings. I'm gonna check each of these. And sure enough, I need to play with the angle jitter a little bit more, the roundness jitter, and then the scatter, the count jitter. Maybe the position jitter. Nope, that's too crazy just so it, it's not as precise as a digital brush. Default digital brush often is, so it looks a little bit more like a real brush, like that. Okay, now I'm gonna take its opacity down. And I'm gonna even, no, I'm not gonna turn on smoothing just because I think that slows it down even more, but I am gonna take its size down to, 
maybe around 100 pixels. And you notice how I'm zoomed in right now. To move around while you're zoomed in, if you don't have a trackpad, I have a trackpad where I can use two fingers. But you can hold down spacebar. And that, that will give you the hand tool. And then you can just click and drag to move around. But also when you're zoomed in, you lose, you get to do some kind of clear detail work, which is great. But you lose the sense of the overall image. And it's really important that you can step back and see the overall image. And if you don't want to have to take the time to always hit, you know, Command-0 if you're on your Mac or Control-0 to see it, a, a handy little tool is called the Navigator. So if you go to Window and click on Navigator, this is a new window for us. There's a little shortcut for it here in Photo-P. That will give you a little miniature view of it. And if I extend my window a little bit so it's not overlapping when I'm painting as much, then you get to see it in its hole even when you're zoomed in, right? And that can be really helpful. Another trick that uh, digital artists often do is they reverse the image. So for instance, if I wanted to try this, there's really no harm in it. It just gets you to look at it a slightly different way. I can take both my sketch layer and my refined paint layer select them both, I have to unlock them, then hit control T and then flip it horizontally. Right. So now it's facing the other way. And then of course, if I paint it with that in mind, then I'm going to want to take my reference. This is all setting up, right? Setting up for more refined painting. And I'm going to want to select all of that and flip that horizontally. But my palette stays the same. Everything else stays the same. So this is another technique that's used. That's pretty different than um, being able to paint traditionally. You're not able to just flip your art. Now, the way that traditional painters will use some of these techniques is that they will have a mirror close to their, their easel or close to their drawing table or painting table. And then they'll reflect the image in the mirror to see if it's working in reverse or not. So if you're a painter, you might try you know, some of these techniques. Because you want your painting to work well from either viewpoint, right? And by flipping it, it shows me that maybe this eye is a little squeezed, right? And its highlight isn't quite bright enough. And so I can try to fix that just with straight painting. But we also have other opportunities as digital painters. So in between working on it last class and working on it this class, I can now kind of see it with some fresh eyes, and that's very helpful. So unlike what you can do with a traditional painting where you just have to repaint anything, I can use some of the compositing skills we've learned. So if I'm a little worried about this eye, I just don't feel, I feel like it's kind of too close, too squeezed in, maybe not wide enough, what can I do? Well, I can take both my refine layer and my sketch layer, select them both. I'm not going to merge them, but what I'm going to do is Control T and I am going to hold that. I can't uh, warp it in the way I want if it's multiple layers. But what I can do is go up to layer with them both selected, hold down option while I click on merge layers. And when I hold down option and click on merge layers, it puts them all into one layer together without deleting the, 
the component layers, right? Now with that merged version, so I'll call that merged paint. So just to repeat what I did in order to uh, play with warping and kind of stretching the paint that I have, I took my, my base layer, my sketch layer, and my refined paint layer, which are both separate, and I want to keep those available and separate because those will be helpful later, even though they're not finished yet. I selected both of them by holding down Shift. They're both unlocked. And then by holding down Option, while, while I go to Layer and say Merge Layers, and this works in, in Photoshop as well as Photo P. So if I hold down Option and click on Merge Layers, instead of combining those two into one layer and deleting the old ones, it will make a brand new layer that merges them. So this very helpful tool, because now I have one that's merged and I still have the component parts. And so I just renamed that layer the merged paint layer. So now I'm going to use that. And what I wish I could do with my finished traditional paintings, hit Control T and then warp it before I get into really fine detail, right? Because this might soften it a little bit. And then just like we've done in compositing, stretch out my... stretch out certain parts of it, right? So it's a great way to do caricature. But I merged my paint layers together onto a new copied layer. And now I'm using Control T and Warp to bring that eye to where I want it. Can you still manipulate the colors within that merge layer or you have to go back to your original layers? So all we're doing with digital painting is making pixels. So everything I can do with pixels on the previous layers, I can now do on this layer. And it kind of uh, solidifies everything, right? So what's the difference? It's from this to this, just a subtle difference but one that I feel more confident building up on now. And now I'm going to continue with my refined painting. And why not just make that a new layer? Remember, you can use as many layers as you want. I'll call this more refined paint. And away we go. So in terms of color manipulation, we just warped it a little bit to kind of address that eye. That doesn't mean that I still don't need to kind of fix it in paint, but it gives me a more solid footing for that. And I noticed that the whites of the eye should probably come around. And I should push this back a little. And I'm only painting at 44%. So everything I do has to be kind of restated if I want it to darken. Just like if it was traditional painting. And of course I can zoom in and use Command Plus or the magnifying glass to zoom in, but as much as possible, use shortcuts so you can just stay on the brush tools. I can always steal colors from myself. Now, what are the other advantages of digital painting over traditional painting? Well, at any time, you can adjust your colors overall. You can use the direct adjustment tools like brightness, levels, hue saturation, color balance, 